welcome to my very first goodbyes or goodbyes. Now, if you looked at the title, I think you have a pretty good idea as far as what this is going to be about. I just start decided to start grabbing things that I've purchased kind of throughout the year. So I guess this will be my like 2015 goodbyes or goodbyes. Um, I'm going to make it a quarterly thing next year. So since I had a whole year's worth of products to choose from, I have quite a few things. This is just narrowed down to pieces that I really could not ever repurchase and stuff that I would definitely and will definitely repurchase. So let's get started, shall we? First thing that I have to say that was a good buy was this Cinema Secrets Makeup Brush Cleanser. It is amazing. It takes anything and everything out of my brushes, especially when I'm cleaning them in between like deep cleans. Heaven knows that we all hate deep clean days. They take forever. Getting everything out of the brushes just seems like an eternity and you literally stand over your sink for like a good 30 minutes to an hour, at least for me, because I will literally hoard all of my dirty brushes and then wait until I have nothing left in order to um, start cleaning. So this has just been a lifesaver because it cleans absolutely well. Like it gets gel liner out of my brushes completely. It is literally the only thing that will get the gel liner out of my brushes and sometimes I'll use this before I even start deep cleaning. So definitely a good purchase. The next purchase that I made this year that I was completely pleased with and I wondered why didn't I do it sooner is the Clarisonic Mia. Now I Decided to purchase just the Mia, not the Mia 2 or the fancy Mia 3, which I think they have now, because I figured after reading all the reviews, like I really just needed something to deep clean my face. I didn't need all of the other gadgets. I just needed something basic that was going to help me clean out my pores. And so I decided to go ahead and make the purchase and I have never been happier to purchase anything in my life. Actually, of course I probably have, but I'm exaggerating, obviously. <laughs> but this I actually was really happy to purchase. Sometimes I'll go in and I'll completely clean my face as far as I can see. I will do a makeup remover and then I will cleanse my face and then I will sometimes even do a, still like a scrub like once or twice a week. After that, I go with this and sometimes I'll still find like makeup all along the bristles of the brush. So it's just it gets the stuff that you didn't even know you still had. So definitely a good purchase for me. Next, of course, if you've seen my under eye correcting video or like my concealer routine, you know this one. It's the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. I absolutely love this thing. I don't know how I've gone so long without it. It's the most amazing thing for anybody that has crazy dark circles like I do. This gets the job done and it doesn't crease on me it doesn't bulk up it doesn't make anything that i put on top of it look extra super cakey so good purchase the next thing that i purchased that i absolutely love was a lipstick this is from rimmel and it's the lasting finish by kate lipstick in the number 14. now i usually don't do very well with nudes and i won't do nudes period but this is kind of like a mauvey pinky nude that I absolutely loved and that actually looks really good on me on my skin tone. I usually feel like the nudes look a little too chalky and too white on my skin and on my lips and so I steer clear from that. However, this for me was the perfect like mauve kind of I guess nude for me. Next thing that I purchased that I also really love and that I've been using religiously is the um, Jumbo Eye Pencil from NYX. This is in the color Yogurt. It is an absolutely beautiful color to wear underneath the eye area along your waterline in order to brighten up and widen the eyes. Another thing that I really loved this year for me is the Clinique Take the Day Off um, makeup remover. It takes everything off, especially when I do really dark eyes. I have to have something in order to help me, you know, before I cleanse my face. So a good makeup remover does the trick and you have to have a good one because even those wipes, like the Neutrogena wipes, I really was hoping that I would love and that I would like and that they would do the trick. But for whatever reason, they give me like an aller allergic reaction. Not sure what's going on there, but they give me an allergic reaction and I can't really use them. Therefore, I use this guy and as you can see, like, 
almost out and it takes everything off so I would definitely repurchase this guy. Another thing that I really liked this year was the Hula Benefit bronzer. I don't know where I had been living like under a rock or what was the matter with me but I had not like had not discovered this guy until this year and now this is the only thing that I use literally the only thing that I use to contour with and it leaves such a natural looking contour it's not like gray it's not too brown it's literally just a contour like a beautiful contour and so if you want anything that looks really natural really subtle that's not too over the top this guy obviously I'm probably the last one to know this but obviously this guy and the last thing that I will have, I mean, because I could literally do this all day long, but I'm not going to bore you with that. But the last thing that I have that I really, really absolutely loved was the MAC Blush in Peaches. Looks absolutely gorgeous on the skin if you're looking, especially around fall months, if you're looking for something that's not as pinky. Nice subtle look for the cheeks, and it looks amazing on, so... Now on to the stuff that I regret buying. I wish I'd give my money back, stupidly didn't, and now I could just say that I tried it and I won't try it again. The goodbyes. I understand, before I get started, I'm gonna have a disclaimer. Of course, I understand that these products may work for some people, they may not work for others. I'm probably, obviously, on the list of did not work for me, but just because they didn't work for me doesn't mean that people out there don't love them, they don't absolutely swear by them. I just personally did not like them. They just personally did not work for me whatsoever, and because of that, I will not ever be repurchasing them or using them. I hate to say it, but I'll probably end up just throwing them in the trash. The first thing that I purchased that I absolutely regret purchasing is the MAC Studio Water Weight Foundation. It is bad. Or at least it was for me. I don't know how anybody else felt about it. I personally did not like it. I thought that it's really sheer. They say you can build up the coverage. As soon as I put it on, I felt it on my skin, and throughout the entire rest of the day, I felt it on my skin. And I didn't use a whole lot of it. It comes with a dropper, and I used maybe like, I don't know, four, five, six drops, perhaps, on my entire face. Because I obviously like to bring the foundation down to my neck, and so I need a little bit more than just a few drops so that it blends nice and evenly, and you're not left with a line along the jawline. Anyway, so I used about that much, and I felt it on my skin. As soon as I got up off of my makeup chair and I was going on with my day, I just I could just feel it and I felt it throughout the day. I felt like oily. Like I just felt like everything on top that I had put on top was just kind of like slipping everywhere. And I am more on the dry side as far as my skin goes than I am on the oily side. So I can't say like, oh, you know, because I'm oily, that's why I felt even worse. Like, no, I'm more on the dry side than I am the oily side. However, with this foundation, I felt oily the entire day and I could not wait to take it off. And I decided to use it a couple of times after that because I figured, I don't know, was having, I don't know, a bad skin day. And so I decided to give it a couple more tries. Same result. So nothing really changed. It's just foundation. So it just did not work for me and I would not repurchase it again. Um, this is the Prep and Prime, the MAC Prep and Prime BB. It's their beauty balm. And I'm sure it works great for some people. I'm sure that um, a lot of people love this stuff because it's a BB cream and it's really light and it's supposed to be, you know, better for your skin. It has high SPF of 35, which is, you know, obviously higher than foundations, which usually have like anywhere from 15 to 30 so I'm sure this works great for a lot of people however I had to put it on my goodbye list because I don't know what ingredient it carries and maybe I should start doing a little bit more research on this kind of stuff myself because it gave me like an allergic reaction I literally felt itchy every single time that I and I feel itchy right now too maybe because I grabbed it and then I touched my skin I have no idea and I felt itchy on my face I felt itchy on my neck it was just a bad time just didn't work so goodbye Next on my list is the Laura Mercier Secret Concealer. It was just not working for me. And like I've said in my concealer video, perhaps it's because I have, because I do have a lot of lines like underneath my eye just naturally, and I have dark circles. And so when I use concealer, I don't just use like a little couple drops or a couple of dots. Like I actually have to use a little bit more than I'm sure a lot of people do. And so 
putting this on the same way that I would put on any other concealer was just a bad time for me because it is really thick. It's a cream and it just sat on my skin really heavily and completely just brought all of the lines to light. So all of my under eye lines were just really obvious after I put this on. And like I did with everything else, I gave it a few more shots and it was just a no-go. So for that, I put it on my goodbye list. This next powder is not the powder's fault because the powder is actually pretty great. However, it's just a bad color for me. I thought that it would look or that it would work well because I am a little bit of a darker skin tone than most. Not too, too dark, but I am, I, I mean, obviously. I'm Mexican, like obviously I'm darker. And so I thought that this was gonna work for me, but it just did not work for me. It just looks really yellow under my eye area. Um, but the powder is actually really nice. I'm sure it would look amazing because I've seen it look amazing on other um, people that have like darker complexions than I do and like just slightly darker, not even that much darker, but I've seen it look really good on them. However, for me, it was just a little too yellow. So definitely. A goodbye, unfortunately, because I actually like that powder. This next thing I purchased at the beginning of the year because everybody and anybody on Instagram was talking about it. Now, of course, Anastasia Beverly Hills absolutely love her brow wiz, her pomade, literally the only thing that I will put on my brows because they're the only thing that works. But... This contour cream kit was just a no-go for me. Absolutely no-go for me. I cannot, no! And I literally, I remember it was like the launch date and the website crashed and I was like waiting in line to check out for like 30 minutes. Finally checked it out and I could not wait to for this to arrive by mail. Like I just could not wait. Once I finally did, it was like a, eh, no, no. The consistency of these was just way too dry. The formula, rather, of these is just way too dry. I remember I even, I don't know if I saw like Manny MUA's Snapchat or like a YouTube video and he was talking about them, trying to make them work. And I mean, I'm sure it was sponsored in some way or I'm sure that he felt like he had to talk it up because it was Anastasia and who's gonna talk it down? Nobody, but um, he was even talking about like, oh yeah, you know, Jacqueline and I, Jacqueline Hill, I'm assuming, Jacqueline and I, we were talking about it and like, oh, we decided that, you know, we'd put like oil on it. And I'm like, why would you need to put oil on a product that's supposed to be a cream itself? Like, why is it so dry that you would have to feel the need to put an oil on it? But okay. And so at first I tried to work with it without the oil because I figured there shouldn't be a need for oil. Definitely too dry for me. And then I tried putting some oil on it definitely too oily. So just regardless of how I used them, they were just super, super dry. And even now, like maybe because I haven't used them in a while. So obviously like they're going to be dry, but they're just super, super dry. Would I ever purchase this had I known that the formula on these was going to be so incredibly dry and just awful? Absolutely not. But you live, you buy, and you learn. So no go for me on the Anastasia cream contour kit. No, no, no. So that is it for this episode of goodbyes or goodbyes. Um, I hope you guys enjoy these types of videos. I absolutely love giving you guys, anybody, my honest feedback on anything because I feel that there is a lack of that in the community. People are just trying to sell and I absolutely understand. People are just trying to make money. I absolutely understand that, but you really don't know who to trust. The only person that I feel like I can honestly, truly, perhaps even 100% trust as far as beauty products is Samantha from Battlelash. If you haven't seen her, which I highly doubt, but if you've never checked her out, please do yourself a favor and check her out. She's absolutely honest, down to earth. She does cuss a lot, but hey, just keeps it just keeps it real, I guess. So yeah, I like doing these types of videos for you guys. And like I said, I'm gonna make them a once a quarter thing. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, guys, take care and I will see you guys next time. Bye.